What's poppin' homies? It's your favorite homegirl, that's cool. Let's get into this commentary. What's poppin' homies? It's your favorite homegirl, Gossip Girl. And today, I want to talk to you about the case of Erin Murdy. She's 30 years old. She's from Coney Island. Now, the 30-year-old mom told relatives that she drowned all three of her kids and was later found walking along the beach barefoot in a robe. And this is from the, um, the cops and other sources. Okay. So she was taken to the 60th precinct for questioning and then carted off on a stretcher to NYU Langone Hospital in Brooklyn. All right. But the sad thing is three beautiful children are gone. And her family did say that she suffered a case of mental illness. Now the children were found and they were pronounced dead around 5.38 a.m. on Monday. It's so sad. It's just, oh my God. Like, I was supposed to do this story yesterday, but I just, I just could not. Okay. It was just so much. And then I wanted to wait for more information to come out as well. Now, the tragic siblings, a four month old baby boy, a four year old girl, and a seven year old boy were discovered unresponsive around 4 40 a.m along the shoreline at West 35th Street, just three blocks from their mother's apartment. My goodness. Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. So, let's go into more the more information that I found. So, here's this article. The Brooklyn mom suspected of drowning her three young children Monday was facing an eviction from her apartment, battling custody issues, and also dealing with mental health woes before she, you know, killed her children, before she drowned the kids. Now, Erin Murdy, who's 30 years old of Coney Island, owed more than $10,000 in back rent for her Neptune Avenue apartment where she lived with her children and had been threatened with getting booted out since January after the state's COVID-19 eviction moratorium expired. The mom who, you know, well, basically told her kin she drowned her kids, three-month-old Oliver, but he, when one article is that he was four months old, but in this article say he was three-month-old, his name was Oliver. Her four-year-old daughter name was, was Liliana and her seven year old son name was Zachary on a nearby beach earlier Monday and stopped paying her $1,531 a month rent in July and was served with an eviction notice days before the, morator the moratorium expired in January. Now let me say this New York City rent is extremely high Okay, when COVID happened, a lot of people lost their jobs. They lost a lot of income and everything. Things got really tough during that time. Okay. And there was a lot of people who were facing eviction after the moratorium had, was done. But my thing is this. I'm not sure if she had a job or what her income was like, but... There should have been programs to help her, okay? $1,500 a month in rent. That's a lot of money, okay? And now, it's just to live in Manhattan, the base rent is $5,000, okay? The base, and this is in the news, the base rent to even live in Manhattan is $5,000. But Coney Island is in Brooklyn. And Brooklyn is very expensive. Very expensive. Very expensive. I'm not sure how many bedrooms um, Aaron had, but $1,500 a month. And then you have, you know, to pay for the children's expenses. You got to get food and all types, in clothing and all types of things. And it says here um, that she was also battling custody issues. So, 
was one of the children's, you know, I'm not sure of the children's father, but were they trying to get custody of the kids? And she was dealing with that on top of mental health issues. If somebody has a case and was diagnosed with mental health, there should be programs in place to help them. You know, New York City has changed so much that I'm not even sure about the programs they have now. But she has mental health issues. She was battling, you know, custody in court. And then now she's hit with a eviction notice. So for a person that has mental health issues, that is dangerous. For all those things to be happening at one time because you never know what could make them snap. And her family confirmed that she does have a history of mental illness. But my thing is, why was she, why wasn't she in a program? Or is there a program to help people with mental health issues that have children help with eviction or help them get their rent paid? Because I'm pretty sure if that was the case, if she had some type of help, that would be the least of her worries. And this wouldn't happen. Now, I'm not I'm not making no excuse for her because this shouldn't have happened. Okay? Just like she told her, one of her family members, hey, she drowned the kids. She could have reached out to family and said, hey, I need some help. But then again, I don't know if she did and her family didn't help her. You know? It's a lot. And it's, I feel horrible and i feel bad because these children didn't do anything but be born and in articles i'm reading about how bubbly and you know zach was you know how wonderful her children was and they're gone three children a new baby and she probably was battling postpartum depression as well. So you got postpartum depression, mental health issues, getting evicted because your back rent is $10,000, okay? And then you're battling custody issues in court. Oh, my goodness. And like I said before, I'm not making any excuses for her. But I just want to know, was there any, did anybody try to help her? You know, in the process, was she in any programs? And if not, why not? Like sometimes when they cover these stories, they give you what's going on now, right? But they don't take, they don't deep dive to figure out what caused this, what triggered this, what happened. And sometimes it takes a family member to speak out. When cases like these get talked about on YouTube. And then a family will say, well, hey, I see you talking about this. This is what's really going on. This is what really happened. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like there's so much more to this case than what the news and what these articles are putting out. How long was she battling this stuff? Okay, we see about, we know about the rent. That was a while. You know, like I said, COVID-19 came through. It didn't mess everybody up. It really did. It messed everybody up. And if you're a resident of New York City, it was even worse. It was worse. Okay? She's battling custody issues. Whether that's when, you know, the kid's father taking her to court or she had a case against her. Right? I don't know which one it is. Then she has mental health issues on top of that. When a person has mental health issues, from what I learned in school, that too much pressure on them can cause them to snap. Okay? And then I also know that when a person has mental health issues, they should not be indulging in alcohol or drugs because that also adds to the mental health. And it's not bad. It doesn't mix. I'm not saying she was on drugs or drinking. I'm just saying what I learned in school. And it's a shame that three babies, three children, three innocent children are gone. I just feel like 
she could have got more help if there was help given. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know if she reached out to people and said, I need some help. I need some help. I don't know. But it's just really sad that this this has happened. This, I, I just don't understand. This is just sad. So let me continue with this article. Relatives reached out, was reached by the Post on Monday and said that Aaron appeared unstable in recent years and had troubling had trouble maintaining con- consistent relationships. There was a time when Aaron and I were in contact all the time, but in 2015, 2016, she disappeared off the earth. I didn't know how to get in touch with her. And that was said by her uncle. Now I'm faulting myself for that. She obviously needed help and you can't help but think maybe I could have. But you can't blame yourself, uncle. You can't blame yourself. Sometimes people with mental health issues, they they seem to be okay. And then when they're not okay, they disappear. And if they change their phone number, you can't get in contact with them. So sometimes you got to just pop up on them. And that's kind of dangerous within itself because you don't know how they might react if you pop up at their house. You know what I'm saying? So you can't blame yourself for this. And I'm looking at pictures of her. In her face, she just looked like she just, you know, she just troubled. Oh my God, this is a sad situation. <sighs> I'm lost. I'm at a loss for words. It's not every day you lose three family members in one day. Nobody wants to go to the funeral and see these three bodies. Another uncle, um, Jean Stephan, 64, said Murdy didn't appear to have her life together. I don't think she could handle a relationship or anything like that. She didn't seem like she was that kind of person. She didn't seem like she was stable. And that's what the relative said. Anybody can go out and just fool around, but a person that's stable can settle down with one person. She didn't have her life together enough to do that. Well, she had three kids. She had an apartment. She had to been stable, you know, had to have understood something along that line because she had a seven-year-old boy, four-year-old daughter, and a three-month-old baby. Now, around 1 a.m. Monday, concerned relatives called the police to report Murdy may be drunk and may have done something to harm her children. Hours later, the mom was found by police walking barefoot through the sand on Coney Island Beach wearing a bathrobe and appearing dazed. I'm not going to put these pictures up here of them carrying out these poor babies. I- I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to share that. I will just share pic- the pictures of the police and stuff like that and maybe a photo of Miss Miss Erin Murdy, but I'm not going to show these babies in this light. I'm not going to do that. Mm. Family members of Murdy admit they were aware of her endless struggles. Though the family members were aware of her mental health issues. Law enforcement sources said that before cops found her, she told relatives she drowned all three kids. The children were later found unresponsive along the shoreline just three blocks from her home on Neptune Avenue and pronounced dead at the Coney Island Hospital soon after. Now, Murdy's aunt, Dying Stephan, or Stephen, said she knew her niece was struggling but wasn't aware just how bad. I knew she was struggling in the sense she was trying to find her way through life. In this family, we do have a history of mental illness to vary to varying degrees. A few of us have battled with bipolar disorder, but I didn't know her mental struggles. And that was the aunt said. I just knew she was trying to find a way for her children, a way to get on her feet. It was the mental issues that took over. Another uncle of Aaron said he was speechless when he heard from relatives that Aaron drowned her three children 
she did a little she did a little crazy stuff but nothing that would lead to harming her children or herself she used to she used to like to party here and there do a little drinking but i didn't see any drug abuse or see that she was really irresponsible it's just tragic i don't know she never gave us that sign that she would hurt her children she loved her children Now, Murdy's uncle said his niece was in the midst of a custody dispute with seven-year-old Zachary's father before what happened Monday. Okay, so the custody battle was with Zachary's father. He had issues with the way she was raising the child, from what I understand, the uncle said. She kind of went off, she kind of went off the grid after that, changed her numbers. She wasn't on social media, at least not to the point that I could find her. Law enforcement noted Murdy had failed to bring her son to a custody exchange in July ahead of a six-week visit planned with the kid's father. In May, Murdy pulled Zachary off his youth football team without explanation, according to his coach. She never gave a flat-out reason of why he stopped playing. CITY, which is City Silverbacks football team head coach Alan McFarland, told the Post she seemed as if she was juggling a lot. Now, during the 2021 football season, coaches in the youth mentorship program regularly picked up Zachary for practice, fed him dinner after games, and dropped him off home. They tried to convince Murray to bring Zachary back who McFarlane said loved football. So they wanted him back on the team, but she didn't let him go back. We felt it would be a positive thing for him to get out of the house and, you know, just be involved. We had practice four times a week for three hours a day. That would have been a good relief for the household. The children's exact cause of death is still not determined. McFarlane choked back tears imagining the terror Zachary must have endure, endured at the end of his life. Hmm. Now, no charges have been filed against Erin, who was transported to NYU Langone Hospital late Monday morning for psychiatric evaluation. How does she come back from this? Even if you get your mind back, how do you get over the fact that you drowned your children that's a shadow that's going to be over her for the rest of her life that's what i'm worried about i don't think there's a support group for people who commit such heinous crimes are there people who are functional that have done this yes there are people who are who was functional that have murdered children it's in the news it's, 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 it's articles everywhere. You know, people do things for different reasons. But this right here, man, this right here is some heavy stuff. This is some heavy, heavy, heavy stuff right here. I'm going to go ahead and end my video now because it's already long enough. But my goodness. I just send my prayers to the family, those poor babies, you know, <sighs> mental illness is real people. I'm telling you, it really is. Mental health issues is real. If you have family members who suffer from this, you know, not everybody in your family is going to have it. It's, it may skip a generation, but it's real people. And I'm just so upset that this happened. Like, oh. wow. All right, you guys, that's all I have for today. I will talk to you guys later and you have a good one. Mm -mm -mm.